Welcome back. So over the weekend, the South African Communist Party finished its Congress. It saw Bladen Zamande finally leaving the position of General Secretary and being replaced by Salim Mapaila, who essentially becomes, I suppose you would say, really the leader of the SACP. But Inza Mande was elected to the position of Chair of the Party. He remains in the top leadership. David Masondo, the Deputy Finance Minister, who seemed to be thrown sort of into the political wilderness during the Zuma era, now the second Deputy Secretary of the SACP. Our political editor is Lokanya Kalata. Lokanya, good afternoon. Welcome to Newsroom Africa. Thank you, Stephen. Happy to be here and uh, looking forward to uh, spending and learning as much as I can. Well, you I'm arrive nice. at an interesting time. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, your first conversation with us is about the South African Communist Party. Yeah. So, in a way, there's a little bit of change in the top leadership. It's sort of the same. Salima Paile has been in the top leadership for a decade. Mm -hmm. What does that tell us about the sort of direction of the party? Well, I mean, when I heard that, I thought, mm, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Salima Paile has, in the past, decade or so, been quite vocal about what it is that the, SAP, the SACP needs to do, as well as uh, the alliance uh, and how they need to be interacting between the SACP and the ANC. Now that he's the de facto party leader, is he going to continue along those lines? Or, uh, you know, is he thinking, well, you know, maybe after the next election or maybe after the next cabinet reshuffle, I could make my way into uh, the president's uh, cabinet. So I don't necessarily think that we, we're going to see any different. Uh, I hope so, but I don't think we're going to see different. I mean, there was a time at the sort of climax of the Zuma years, mm -hmm. coming 2017, five years ago, when, I mean, Salim Apaila was essentially accusing people from the ANC of threatening his own home, mm -hmm. and yet the SACP didn't leave the alliance then. Look, the, the SACP have said, Stephen, that we are going to break away, we are going to contest an election by ourselves, we are going, we're not being taken seriously within the ANC, and each time the ANC would placate them, you know, would talk nicely to them, say, no, we are going to meet at the next meeting, at the next conference, and we'll have and an, an talk through these things, and then just, it just dies away, you know? Uh, I would like to see a stronger SACP um, staking its claim within the alliance, as has Kosatu over the last few years. But is the ANC actually really listening? Do they have time to be entertaining what is, in essence, yet another faction, um, you know, uh, within the alliance? Because I don't necessarily think the ANC has got their time, and I think there are way too many fires within the ANC that they are trying to put out. And I think the, the, the SACP's issues you know, I, they'll continue to remain on the back burner. There's a whole series of different dynamics. Some of them are contradictory dynamics in our politics at the moment. But it seems to me it may be that five years from now, two years from now, you have more influence going into an election on your own bat, winning 10% of the vote and influencing policy through coalitions, even through coalitions in provinces, whether you're Action SA or the DA or whoever you are, uh, the EFF, might be a good example, um, and that the SACP maybe, if they if they want to influence society, you do that rather than be within the alliance. Especially if the ANC is going to run out of positions for you, um, it's a lot more complicated than that. But they're close to power now. You know what I mean. So they are influencing power right now. Maybe not to the degree as as what they would like, but Mapaila can easily call the president. Mm -hmm. The president can easily call Mapaila. Uh, Bladen Zimande remains within cabinet, a, 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 a quite a, a senior position within cabinet. He's now chair, our national chairperson of the SACP. So, you know, they, 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 they're close to power as to whether or not they've got the, the, the chutzpah, I suppose, to go it alone and to go and say, this is us as the SACP, vote for us um, as a party, not as an alliance partner to the, S to the ANC, and then seeing whether or not people will trust them. I think the SACP knows that it won't get enough votes, uh, and therefore it, they'd much rather play second fiddle to the, uh, to the ANC, but it does mean that they are close to power, and I think that's really what what is keeping them back at the moment. I suppose it's very difficult for us as outsiders, as journalists, to try and, and, and always has been, mm. to really assess 
how much influence the SACP has. I mean, it, in 2017, again, they were really the first members of the alliance to move against Zuma mm -hmm. um, at, the SA, at the SABC, as you, you will yeah. very well remember. Um, that was important at the time. That gave people political cover at the time. Mm -hmm. They could easily point to that period and say, if we hadn't done that, there could have been a different outcome at Nazareth. No, I think they, they kind of knew. Look, Zuma's term was, the second term was coming up anyway. So they had to... Uh, hedge their bets to say, okay, how are we going to move? How, which way is the wind blowing? I don't necessarily think that the SACP is in a powerful position to influence policy within the African National Congress. If they were, there would be some policies within the ANC that would have a very strong kind of like communist stamp on it. And it as you know, ANC policy does not have that. It's very liberal. And, 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 and I don't, uh, you know, just looking at policy, mm. I don't think the SACP has got the, 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 the type of power and influence that it, that it really craves. But it is close to power. And that's what we must never forget. And sometimes being close to power is, is, mm. is, is as crucial as having the power mm. itself. It's a really important point about policy. Um, Bladen Zamunde reminded us last week, perhaps more than once, mm. that the party now has 300,000 members. That's an important, it's an important number because um, there's also a tradition of almost sort of negotiated leadership. You know, everybody knew Soli Mapaile was going to take over. I mean, we knew in 2012 he yeah. was going to come to the top leadership. Um, that did not happen with the position of chair. So in Zamunde face, it was Gwebs uh, Tronde, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for the position. And I mean, there's history between those two. Mm -hmm. Fine. The minister and his director general. His former director general. Yeah. So it seems to me that this may be harder to negotiate leadership in future. It's easy to do when, you have, when you're a smaller party. Mm -hmm. It's harder to do when you're a bigger party because almost by definition you have more yeah. constituencies. Yeah, I, I hear that. But would it not have been easier or would it not have been or made the, the, the road forward a little bit easier had the SACP gone for fresh leadership? Mm -hmm. Because Blade and Zumande is entrenched. Mm -hmm. You know, as uh, he, he thinks along ANC lines, yeah, he wears a red cap and now and again says SACP, mm -hmm. but he thinks along mm -hmm. ANC lines. And what I feel that this conference missed was to bring in fresh new blood mm -hmm. that is really able to challenge mm -hmm. and, and, and help mm -hmm. the ANC's renewal process. Because just moving the chairs around and, and, and blade moving mm -hmm. from, um, you know, from, from, from GS... To, mm. to national chairperson, that doesn't really help the SACP and the alliance partner because ultimately the ideas remain the same. It's always interested me that um, the SACP has always been very good at diagnosing the problems. Mm -hmm. Kassato has always been louder in his criticism. I don't know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, the SACP, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 traditionally it's the party of, of intellectuals. You know, and I think that's something that they brought into the ANC, and, and the ANC is aware of that because the SACP has always brought that aspect to it. The ANC does have intellectuals, but, you know, the SACP, I, I think, it just has a, a richer history mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, and then, obviously, the, the COSATU as, as, as the trade union federation, some of its members, you know, uh, due to circumstances are, are unable to bring that kind of discussion and therefore their contribution to the table is slightly different, is maybe louder, maybe a bit more bombastic, uh, but ultimately it works. Is, it going to, is this recipe going to continue to work for the future? I, I don't know. Uh, I think the, the SACP needs to they need to do something different because otherwise they'll, they'll remain the, the, the groom. Lokanya Kalata, thanks very much indeed. Welcome. I can promise you the next few months are not going to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Our political editor with us on Newsroom Africa.